Hi everyone and welcome to a new beginner's guide for Endless Legend. Today we're gonna look at heroes. Heroes in Endless Legend are very important. They can be used as four different types of units. It can be either a governor, an admiral, a um, general for your army or a spy. We're gonna see that the main two unit type you're gonna use are you're gonna use them as either a general or a governor for your city. In this video we're gonna quickly look at the basic basics around heroes and we're gonna discuss the different scales they've got, especially the different skill tree different depending on whether they're ranged support infantry or flying. Then we're gonna do a little ranking about all the factions which um, heroes are good as which type of unit you know. And last we're gonna look at a few very worthy heroes. Uh, I've got a selection of uh, four or five heroes to show you so that's gonna be quite fun. So let's begin. How do you recruit a hero? And why would you recruit a hero? Recruit a hero is the first thing you'll need to do apart from your starting hero and heroes you get from quest is researching the technology called the marketplace which is here. The mercenary market which unlocks the marketplace. The marketplace will let you um, hire heroes from the market. This is the market. You can see here you got a section for heroes and you can this is how you read them. You look well, maybe we should sort them by level. Um, so you look from the left you can see what which faction they are. So we've got two allies, one vultures and two other allies over there, one necrophage hero, one wild walkers, etc. etc. You've got the little zoom icon which we're gonna look in a second. Then you've got their um, a class. They are either ranged or this is um, infantry or they are support units. Uh, actually they don't tell you what it is, it just give you a tooltip that tell you what they do. You can also have a flying hero which I'm gonna show you at the end but none of the default heroes from faction are actually flying so you can kind of forget about them. Then you've got the level at which you recruit them which means that if you recruit one of these, they're gonna be, they already have a certain level, which means they already have four or five skill points to spend. Then you've got their usual stats, so life, movement, attack, defense, initiative, damage, and vision. Um, I mean, they're all kind of balanced, I would, I would say, in their own specialty, but it's always good to look at them. As you can see, for example, this Necrophage Arrow has a lot of health points, so Keep that in mind and a lot of defense. Um, so he's a very good general for example. Um, you've got the demand, so that's basically how many people are asking the offer and demand um, low which tells you their price and you have some exclusive heroes so especially when you play in multiplayer keep, keep a um, good look at these because you might be interested in a hero, but someone might, might buy it before you. However, if it's exclusive to you for a certain number of turns, you can went, wait if you want to recruit a hero, but don't have the money. And the last column is their price. Obviously, that's quite straightforward. You buy them using Dust. So after that, we're going to look at uh, how you go and look at the details of a hero. And first of all, you can equip them. So to equip them, maybe... I'll I'm going to show you with one of my hero. Let's take first one, for example. Um, his equipment, as you can see, you got his equipment on the left. If, if they are governors, their equipment are not very important. They do have, there are some, um, however, not here, but there are some accessories that provides you with like food bonus or dust bonus. So you might want that for your governors however if you want general that's where you're going to be using you know the weapons and the armors for example and by um, giving them some tokens you can then equip them at a certain cost which is dust basically sometimes some of the um, 
strategic resources, so always keep that in mind. That's the same for units. However, in this video we're not going to look at that too much because I would like to focus more on the skill tree and the different capacities of your heroes. Um, as you can see, all the heroes do have a number of capacities and you have to zoom in to be able to know what it does looking at the tooltips. So once we're going to look at all the different heroes from the different faction, we're going to read these ones but basically you know that they all have a certain number of capacities that are all good and when you see the number on the right, so Origa, Affinity 1, 1, 1 um, you can go up to 3, sometimes 4 for these affinities and basically it's a percent percentage based value which augments the more higher you are in the um, capacity so for example point blank power is 10% attack I think point blank power number 3 is 30% attack. Skill tree, so as you can see I have spent some skill points toward this class. The skill tree is dif uh, divided in three tiers. The class section, the command section, the faction section. You've got a certain number of skill points that you will be able to spend on the different trees, on the different tiers of the tree, and they have connections between the different section however if you go full faction you might not want to go also for class and vice versa if you go full class you probably don't want to go into faction you might end up finishing spending your bonds in common because you need to follow the lines to be able to um, up the skill points that's why you always start from the start and goes to the top and the last um, section of the skill tree is always quite good bonuses so Talking about that, let's first look at the common skill tree. Common skill tree is not the best, it's probably the least important one, but it has a couple of very interesting skills in there. So let's look. First we've got Indiana Bones, which reduce the by a certain percentage the odds to loot nothing after a search on ruins. Uh, it might not look great at the beginning, but it, it can be good for things like ally, uh, so that you always kind of make sure that you find something when you search ruins. Then you do have a fast healer, so you recover faster when your hero has been disabled, either from being captured as a, as a, as a spy or by losing, uh, dying in battle. And then you got no ill hands, and this is probably one of the best from the common skill tree. It gives more experience per turn on units and on hero as well. Which means if he is a general on an army, your army is gonna scale up very quickly. And it's even better if you assign that to the first hero you get in the game. Because obviously the longer you have it, the better it is. But it is very very interesting to do uh, and to level this up um, quite early. Especially for a general where you might go for the class um, tier of the skill tree. Next we do have Siege Mentality, it's quite good when you do Siege, but you don't do that many Sieges anyway, so you might want to do that um, select a specific hero just for Sieges. Lord of Trends, that's for more um, Spy level on Infiltrated Hero, so you have a, if you have a Spy Hero that's always good to try to aim for that. Um, more Fortification on your City, that's quite good for any Governor where you need to defend. Then you got the thirst thirty, surf teeth. Sorry, which reduces military upkeep. This is pretty good, but it's only on army level, so it's pretty not that important. Here we've got face reader, which increases the security on cities. That can be quite good as well if you want to reach a level of hundred percent on one given city, where you know spy my target. Um. The Inspirational Leader is a very good late game bonus for all governors because it gives you a total of 15% food industry, dust and science for any hero um, if you go up to level 3, so that means you can spend 3 points on this. That's a very very good skill to have for governors, but probably the best is Cold Operator which negates all negative effects from winter. Um, so especially in late game this is the best skill and it, it works for any assignment so either a governor so your CT doesn't suffer any of the negative effects from winter 
or for your army where you get, for example, reduced movement. So definitely you will build your um, skill tree towards cold operator because it's useful in any situation. Okay, that's it. So now let's look at the different type of skills you get for different classes. So ranged units have a class tree which is pretty good when you do have an army of ranged units. So obviously you will want to try to um, get a ranged hero, a ranged general if you are for example the white walkers. Um, why? Because they do have, well, bonus of movements, that's always good. Then more vision, that's good for anyone. Extra accessory slot on heroes, that's kind of, you don't really care about that. Uh, you got more attacks on units, which is always good, because your ranged army are going to favor attack and damage uh, rather than defense and health. And this is probably the most important one, it's plus one range in battle on ranged units. So it means if you have already a range of four or three, you're gonna get a range of five or four. And that can give you this extra little bonus that may that basically let you shoot one more arrow onto a unit before it reaches you, so you're kiting it. And that can give you the win really on any battle. So very, very important, especially if you have a lot of wrench unit in your army and then extra damage so as i said damage attack and ranged this is a very good skill tree for um, ranged army next let's look at support um, so dragon heroes are support heroes and their skill tree is very good overall for army it lets you specialize in any type of um, for any type of armies, whether you want defense or attack. Um, so let's look at it. It gives you um, more defense as the first choice, then more reinforcements positions, which can be actually very, very important when you have multiple armies fighting close by. So don't underestimate this skill. Battle Hymn, which increases the attack, so it's not as good as the attack increase on ranged, but it's probably more balanced because as you can see you got more initiative here, more life here, and extra accessory, which is not very important. Um, more health is very important, especially on the Draken heroes which already have a lot of health, as you can see. <laughs> um, so that's it for the support heroes. Then we do have one flying hero. I'm gonna show him to you at the hand. I'm gonna talk about these guys. Looks like weird. You've never seen such a guy uh, before, I'm sure, or maybe if you know about Origade. But anyway, this is the only flying hero in the game, and is the the flying hero skill tree is is I, I don't think it's that great. It gives extra initiative here, and then more movement on flying units. Okay, well actually you can get great movement, but. It's only for flying units, so you need an army full of flying units. More damage. Um, more fortification damage per turn, okay. Always good. Uh, extra accessory slot as usual, and more damage. However, it's not that great on the damage, because it's plus 5, plus 10, plus 15. It's not percentage base, which in the late game is probably more important. So this is not a great class tree and actually I would say with this guy you probably want to go with his faction skill tree. Anyway, the last kind of skill tree is the infantry, oops sorry, uh, the infantry skill tree, so that guy. And actually I don't think it's very very good, um, I would probably favor a support hero or a um, ranged hero but that's you know, my choice um, I'm obviously talking here about being them, them being generals obviously there's not a lot of skills in the class trees that are for governors um, so let's look at it as infantry it gives you extra defense then extra life so very defensive based extra accessory slot but much earlier than the others then more defense again more reinforcement position, which is as good as the one for support. 
However, you get you only need to spend one skill point to get it. And then immunity to movement reduction during winter and defense on hero only. This is kind of useless because that's, you're going to get that from cold operator very soon. So apart from the 20% more defense on hero, not that great. So overall, the infantry heroes are meh in terms of the skill provided by the infantry skill tree. Okay, so that's it for a quick overview of the different class skill trees in the game. Now we're going to look at the different factions and we're going to rank them as well. So we got tier 1, tier 2 and tier 3. Tier 1 being the best or one of the best in being a general or a governor. Um, tier 2 is kind of average, it's like okay or situationally good. And tier 3 is like rubbish, just don't. Don't do it. So first we're going to look at the white walkers. And the white walkers are very good at improving your production. And that, that's why they are very good for anything related to a wonder tree. And they are even better if you are in forest. Obviously they are quite good. The wild walkers are quite good for the white walkers. Um, so let's look at what they've got. They've got assignment cooldown on heroes. That's quite basic. Gun increased um, industry on Terra Nuis Forest, but only plus one. Then it got a maximum of, of plus 24 industry on city. Then you got less um, spending on city upkeep, so I guess you've guessed by now that they should be governors and not generals. Um, and then you got building production. Production cost reduction on city, which is even better, minus 24%. That's a lot of turns. Um, like you can gain quite a lot of turn by just uh, building that up to level 2, especially if you go for a wonder victory. And the last one uh, basically increases your industry production in a city by up to 45%. So, for this reason, I will rate actually the white walkers are a as a tier 2 um, governor. They're kind of between tier 1 and tier 2, but I would say they are still tier 2 because industry is good, but it's probably not what you're going to need in your late game. You're probably going to have enough industry in some of your cities or at least one of your city. But I, I'll be honest, I always go with one uh, white walkers hero every game and especially why Rasigo, but we're going to come back to that later in the last section of this guide. As a general, I would say they're fairly decent. They are a ranged hero, and as ranged hero, I think they're very good. They play very well in ranged army, especially with the plus one range in battle, which I love. So for that reason, I think they are tier two generals as well. Next, we can look at the Broken Lord's hero. Um, the Broken Lord's hero do have Dust Care, which means they can be healed with Dust. They also do have Dust abilities, such as Dust Boost and Dust Efficiency, which gives them a percentage of flat-based uh, Dust improvement per hero's level on City. So this is very good, especially when they are very high in terms of leveling. Um, their skill tree gives them increased Dust on Terrain with River, increased dust on terrain with any dust, extra defense if they are generals, then they do have more resources on deposits, so that's, that can be pretty good, 1.5 extra resource, uh, fortification damage on units per turn, and then up to 45% increase on city for dust. For all of these reasons, I think they are quite bad generals, as you can see in their skill trees, they don't have anything extra. They do have sometimes army defense boost, they're quite defense based, and that's how you should play Broken Lords, that's why I guess they are going for defense. Uh, but they are infantry, which is, as I said before, not the best type of hero. So I don't. I think they are tier 3 in terms of generals, uh, we've seen that before, uh, we've seen other generals that are much better. In terms of governor, I think they are tier 2, they're very good if you go for a death city especially the plus 45 percent however the uh, there are some better generals uh, better governors I, I would think for like 
um, more versatile, I would say. They are very highly specialized, and apart just you don't gain much from them. I think that's it for Broken Lords. The Vaulters, or Medzari heroes. They are ranged heroes, and they do have the Techno Lover um, capacity, which basically gives them 35% effect provided by equipment made from the Holy Resource. That's <coughs> true for all units of these factions. And apart from that, they get some army defense boost, and some of them have very good science boost. Which, if governors give them 12% flat science, and then some more science, depending on the hero's level. Um, if we look at their skill tree, it's very heavily going towards science. You get more science on your city center on any district with that, however it's flat, the percentage base. Uh, then, for any assignment, this allows the hero to leave besieged cities, whether spying or being governors. And then more fortification recovery per turn on your city, which is good if you're defending, which is something you probably do as vaulters. And you get extra defense on hero only. Uh, no blockade penalty on Fidzi when I think this is... Um, city is blockaded by siege. And then extra science per trade route and city trade routes. Um, so overall, as you can see, they don't have much as generals. So I think there are tier three generals. Um, they could be okay in the case of uh, when you want to go very defensive, so more fortification. But still, it's not it's not that great. Uh, you never play a game where you expect your city to be sieged all the time. Um, you much prefer have better growth so that you can get more units rather than just uh, building fortification and have nothing to defend with. As generals, uh, obviously governors, they can also do okay with regard to science, but it's not as good as other factions like cultists, for example. And as generals, I would also say they are tier 3, so it's, they are tier 3 governors, tier 3 generals, um, just because they don't have much going on for them. Necrophages hero are infantry heroes, and they do have army damage boost, uh, sometimes food boost as well, and they get slavery, which means if they are governor, it increases the per population value for food and industry for each pacified village. So the more village you've got, the better it is in the region you are. And that can be a very, very good um, capacity for food and industry. Uh, the other skill they've got for the faction is extra food on city. You need cost reduction on the city because of slave driver. Some health regen in your um, region. And then up to 45% food bonus on your city. 25% attack on heroes that's negligible. And even more health regen. Um, because of that, uh, oh, also they've got very, very good stats overall. Um, I would still rate them tier 3 generals, um, I don't think this is as good as it looks, the health regen is probably not that useful, and the skill tree, um, even though they're very good um, by themselves, very good heroes, very, a very good unit on itself, so maybe good for small armies, but I don't think they make very great heroes, uh, generals, so that's tier 3. As for governors, they are tier 2, they're probably one of the best, if not the best, for food. But they're very specialized, as most of the heroes in the game, about the, apart from the cultists. Ardent mages' heroes are support heroes, which makes them by default good generals. And if we look at their capacities, they do have army damage boost. Obviously, the ardent mages are very attack and damage focused. And they do have some science boost and a science efficiency as well. If we look at the skill tree, they've got a flat improvement on city for science. Then they do have plus 30% attack maximum here. Uh, then extra attack again over there. Um, extra science on terrain with anomaly. And up to 45% science on city. And they do have um, expansion disapproval. Um, Malice, so it reduces the expansion disapproval you receive when you assign them to a new city. Um, 
Obviously, they are very focused on attack as generals and on science as governors. I would rate them as a tier 2 governor. I think they are um, good if you go for science. Probably better than the Vultures, for example. Um, maybe not as good as the cultist. Uh, again, it's very situational. You you really want to want to have a, to have a city where you want to produce a lot of science. And then in terms of being generals, I think they're tier two, probably quite close to tier one. Again, that depends on the kind of army you got. Um, but basically, you can grab some extra initiative and then some extra attack from here then extra attack here and extra attack on hero here. So again, it's very decent, especially if you have an army where you need a lot of attack, which could be good for ranged units. However, you might lack a little bit of damage in there. Roving clans hero, they are ranged heroes, which gives them quite a good class kill tree, as we've seen before. They've got a lot of speed um, and they got decent stats. They do have Part of their capacity is some dust boost, so they're going to be with the Broken Lords, the, one of the two factions which focuses on dust as governors. Is it dust boost or dust efficiency? And they do have army initiative as well, uh, and some spying, but never as good as the Forgotten one, for example. If you look at their faction skill tree, it's all around dust, so it gives them more dust on terrain with anomaly, uh, up to 8. But it's quite rare where you're going to get a lot of anomalies. And you got uh, up to 100% trade route bonus on CT trade routes, so that's great for dust and science. And don't underestimate trade routes. And um, extra ownership recovery rate on CT, which is good when you uh, want to go very wide and you need to conquer a lot of CT, because that means your CT is going to be much more productive, much faster. Um, then you get up to for 20 first 20. 4% unit cost reduction on city, which is always good. And then a lot of extra dust, so up to 200% more plus uh, a flat plus 4 per trade route on your city. So that's quite good if you go for a wide empire. And then it gives the uh, ability to give your city create trade routes with empires in Cold War or War. So they are good governors when you go for um, wide empires and as generals as we've seen there's nothing going for them so I would rate them tier 3 generals just because they're ranged they're like okay but not terribly good um, as for um, governors I would say they're good tier 2 they're situationally very good if you go for wide and you need a lot of dust they're very very efficient for that so that's a tier 2 the Draken. The Draken have Fast Learner, which gives them 25% experience gains, which means the, the um, earliest you recruit them in the game, the better it is, just because they're going to get more experience than anyone else, and that's going to scale um, along the game. Um, especially if you start with a... if you play with Draken, your first hero will reach very high levels very quickly. They do have a healing faction, because they are support units, um, and apart from that, they usually have the best army health boost, which is plus 35 life. Well, in this example, that's a army health boost tree. So plus 35 life and 50% life. That's quite a lot. They do have some food boost and spying, but that's not their main capacity. Um, if we look at their skill tree, they give extra food on terrain with river. One more vision on flying units, so that's not not a lot. They do have extra influence production, if they are governors. And then you can add the friendly banner capacity on hero that basically prevents an um, army to be attacked from roaming armies. And then uh, up to 30% extra health here and some approval on the city. I do actually think they are very bad as governors, so I wouldn't go with them. I would rate them tier 3 governors. However, as generals, they are for me tier 1 because they are support, which has the best um, class skill tree. And they do have a couple of very good faction tree and the army health boost, which is fantastic. So with that, you're 
gonna get tons of health, they're very strong. You'll get their uh, attributes as well, they're very very tanky, very good attack. So they are definitely the best generals in the game. Cultist heroes. Cultist heroes, if you've looked a little bit about heroes, are probably very likely the best governors in the game. They are infantry heroes, so you'll see you'll never go for their class tree because they, they make poor generals. However, they do have usually influence boost and some spying, but that's not what makes them very good governors. What makes them very good governors is their, is their faction tree. Because whether you want to go for dust or science or um, influence city, they've got massive boost. So let's look. The first one gives extra everything for every population in your city. That's very strong when you want to go tall. Then you got more attack on units. You, that's pass passable. Extra defense as well. You don't really care about that. Here you've got extra science, so if you want to go for science victory, if you want to have science city, this is great, plus 45%, that doesn't get as good as that. You want more influence? Perfect. You go up to 50% influence with with this one, so that's, that's actually fantastic, and it's very good, obviously, for cultist heroes, which who needs a lot of influence. And the last one is extra dust plus 45%. If you combine that with um, Impassioned Preacher, that's fantastic dust, dust improvement and the better for Broken Lords, for example. And what I usually do is, by the end of the skill tree, you go onto Inspirational Leader and that gives you another um, 20%. So let's, let's look at that. That's like plus 65% dust, for example, or science, or both at the same time. Fantastic. And then go always go on to cold operator. So I would usually go one, two, three, or five, and then you specialize, depends if you want more dust or science or influence. But um, this is quite a good path to to be honest. You don't waste much by going for that as a cultist hero. This is why I'm ranking Cultist heroes are as tier 3 for governors or and tier 1, uh, tier 3 for generals, sorry, and tier 1 for governors, the best governor in the games. Forgotten heroes. Forgotten heroes are very interesting. They do have a couple of unique capacities, such as stealth, which uh, makes them become invisible uh, to all other units, and um, it doesn't work against adjacent army units, however, you stay quite far away from any other army or building, that you're gonna be fine. Um, dual yield, which means they can equip two one-headed weapons um, instead of only one, um, uh, at the cost of mine some less attributes bonus on the left-handed weapon. You do have some other types of bonuses like infantry slayer, but most, most importantly, you give um, them some spying roll, they are very very good because they gain extra infiltration point per turn and more experience when infiltrated. So they are pr the best spy spies in the game, definitely. In terms of skill tree, as you can as you'll see it's very um, directed towards um, spying, so they got assignment cooldown which is very good for uh, spies. Then they do have some extra dust on terrain with forest, which is useless with them. Plus 50% seniority bonus on heroes, that's fantastic, which means everything they're gonna perform in terms of spying is gonna be much, much faster to reach. The, this one, one step ahead, is even better. Um, it basically reduces the time they spend in jail when captured, or it kind of prevents them from being captured whenever they perform infiltration actions. This is fantastic as a spy. And then they got maximum of 30% attack on units, which is very good if you um, get them as generals. Uh, I would say they are probably one of the best generals for infantries. And then Ghost Force, which confers stealth to all units of the army, even though they are not forgotten units. So this is fantastic for all the races to, to get. 
Um, for that reason, I would say that they are tier 3 as governors and a very good tier 2 in terms of generals uh, with a special mention for being the best spies in the game. The ally heroes have a very specific faction skill tree. Let's look at it. The first is that their army ignores movement penalties from terrain difficulty. Then they do get more, uh, they reduce the bribe cost uh, on army when you want to bribe minor factions. Then they do have a building pearl cost reduction on city when they are governors. And then they in it increase the um, the percentage of, uh, of pearls you're going to collect when you, for example, search ruins. And you get more experience as well, that goes up to level 2. Then they do have an ability as an army, um, minus 50, plus 50% 50 health penalty reduction when retreating an army, so that means you can kite quite a lot more. And with your great movement, I mean, actually you're not going to do that it that much, you're going to do it once and that's it. And the last one is coup de grâce, which basically improves the attack when based on the percentage of life lost by the target, so it's very good to finish off an, e an enemy. Um, apart from that, they don't have any very good bonuses. Um, oh, they do have Shifting Nova, which basically heals adjacent ally units. Then they do have Riga Affinity, which gives them more pearls when collecting pearls and more experience. And then they do have quite a lot of general um, skills. Uh, point blank power, block, sharp sense, army health boost. So these ones are for him only, and that's for your army. A little bit of food boost and a little bit of spying, but they're not great. Um, I would rate them as a tier 3 general, because they really don't have anything for them apart from the cost reduction for the building pearl cost, but that's very unlikely you're going to have a lot of them. And I would give them a tier 2 rating for generals, because they do have very good movements, and that makes them probably the best scout if you want a, a, a scouting army in your um, composition. Um, they, they are ranged as well, so that makes them quite good generals. Um, but yeah, apart from that, they're not the best, but they're quite good in what they do, which is scouting and recolting pearls. The Morgor heroes are support heroes, and because they've been added in the latest expansion, they're gonna be very focused on being good as admirals, which means army in water. So they do have Ecotom, which means uh, in battle that they give damage to all nearby opponents. They are amphibious, which reduce and give them better movement in rivers and water. And they are fast learners as well, like the Draken, they're very good, especially in the late game because they're gonna have scaled quite a lot. And then they got Good, they've got influence boost, again that's good for Morgos because you're going to need influence to use Catspo for example. Uh, and they're good spies as well, but as I said, not as good as the Forgotten ones. In terms of their skill tree, it's very oriented towards um, C and being an Admiral. So they do have, this is very very powerful, they give fantastic bonuses to embarked, embarked units. Um, to, sorry. Um, when they are embarked, so when they go on the water, and uh, they can go, they can get up to uh, 500 extra health and uh, a lot of extra attack, defense, initiative, and damage. So this is fantastic to make them a very good um, army general on water. And do they do get extra approval bonus uh, for cities if they have oceanic exploitation? Uh, then on transport ship, if you assign them to a transport ship, again they give uh, up to 60% initiative and defense bonus and extra movement, fantastic. Um, it this one enables detection of units um, with stealth. And then you get naval unit production cost reduction in cities where you want to produce naval units. And then you got no negative effects for winter with this last skill. Um, I would still rate them as a tier 3 governors, because this one is probably the only very good skill they have as governors, So, but it's only useful in the case you want to go for naval units. 
the influence boost is okay, but not as good as other factions one. As generals, I would say they're tier 2, and they're probably the best admirals in the game, so again, something very um, situational, but always important if you want to go to other water to have a Morgor hero. So if we want to quickly recap on the different factions, um, the cultists are the best governors, the drakens are the best generals, and the rest is very situational. The white workers are great for production, wood lords are good for dust, vultures are good if you want to go defensive, necrophages heroes are good for food, ardent mages are good for science, roving clans are good and very good for dust and if you want to go wide, draken has the best generals and one of the worst governors, cultists have the best governors and some of the worst generals, Forgottens are the best spies in the game and they make very good generals as well. The allies are okay generals and they're good at scouting and pearl collecting. The Morgor are the best uh, admirals in the game, so generals for sea armies. And that's it. Now we're gonna look and we're gonna finish by looking at some few unique heroes, some of the best in the game. And we're going to start with Ezlek Tarash, we, who is a hunt hero, the only flying hero in the game. To get him, you need to complete a quest that only appears if you play the game on Endless Day, um, which is the day, it's, I think it's the birthday of Amplitude, the studio who developed the game. Let's not talk too much about him, I think his class tree is not that great, his faction tree is focused around um, science and also army uh, improvement. However, I think he makes a decent general because he's got chain lighting, which is fantastic, especially as a hero. He's got very good damage and attack by default. He's got army health boost and infantry slayer. Um, so I think overall he's a very decent general and he's cool looking and he's the only, is a very unique hero that only you can only unlock by doing certain things. So I think it's, it was worth mentioning it. An interesting hero as well, which was worth mentioning, is the sister of Mercy hero, Valet Sapiri Kagwa. Um, she is an infantry hero, and she comes with Benediction, Unstoppable, and the rest is um, based on his, her sorry, equipment, and she also has army initiative and influence boost. Unstoppable means they got, she's got immunity against debuff disease and parasitism. And Benediction uh, basically removes negative status effect from targeted friendly units in battle. Um, uh, and apart from that, her faction skill tree is oriented towards healing. So there's quite a lot of healing in there, some um, military upkeep decrease in your cities. This is useless and extra damage and more healing. Obviously not a very good hero, I probably would never buy her for any reason, uh, but I think it was worth mentioning, I'm not sure why the guys of Amplitude added a Sister of Mercy hero, it's the only minor faction hero in the game. Interestingly enough, um, cultist heroes are all very good overall, but no one really stands out, uh, but one hero stands out of the White Walkers faction, and it's Waira Sigo. And why is that? It's because he has food boost 3, 2, sorry, and industry boost 3, which makes him fantastically good if you want some industry. So he's the best industry um, hero of the game. And because he's got a food boost as well, that's going to make him quite good to build very tall. And if you get extra experience very early in the game as well, that's going to be great for your industry and food boost. So I always like to recruit him when I see him to um, assign to my city who is going to build units. Definitely a great hero to get, Waira Sigo. Often considered the best general in the game is the Archivist Nacham Pasera. Um, why would he be considered the best general in the game? Well, he is support, he is Draken, 
He's fast learner, if you recruit him early enough he's gonna be a monster in late game. And he's got this army health boost which is fantastic. Um, it does marvels, so don't hesitate to recruit him if you see him. You can't probably can't get anything better in terms of general in your army. And to finish things off, we're gonna talk about Zima Adia. She is probably the best general in the game. Um, she's got she's four forgotten units, so infantry skill tree. She's got army initiative boost. Uh, minor Faction Slayer Army Piercing Boost to the Army, she's Fast Learner, more Spying. Uh, you can only get her from the Forgotten Quest, unfortunately. Uh, but look at these stats, 300 attack, 150 damage. This is mainly because um, she's got the Shadow Brand which, and Shadow Binder, which are two items that you can only get after doing a quest for her, and it gives fantastic stats to her um, plus 30% attack, 30% uh, initiative, 30% damage. Uh, it also gives her shadow strike which it gives, oh actually that's that's it, the 30%. Um, if you have her, if you play Forgotten I would say do the faction quest at least until you get Zima Adia um, and then you have to I think um, improve her skills to get something about spies and only then you can get her the shadow brand and shadow binder which are great items and she turns into this one man army really one woman army so fantastic hero the best general in the game uh, only available to forgottens unfortunately and that concludes our guide about Heroes in Endless Legend. I hope you did enjoy this guide. I'll probably make another guide very soon, so please stay tuned. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This video has taken quite a long time to prepare, um, go through all the different heroes. I hope you did enjoy it, and um, I'll hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye.